Hello class of 2020. No, I'm not about to join a gospel choir. I'm here today to give you a commencement speech because I know that's exactly what you wanted. There's another adult trying to tell you that things are gonna be okay and really not to panic. I'm not here to say that at all. I'm gonna to try to tell you from my heart uh, what's going on here and, uh, and just uh, give you some kind words to say, like, uh, you know, the truth is, is I feel really bad for you guys. You got, you got a really, really raw deal this year, and it's, it's not fair. It's not fair at all because your youth is supposed to be a time when you're just chilling, making TikToks, you know. So now, let me go into my commencement speech for the class of 2020. Hang on a second. Oh, here we go. Is this, is this mic? Does this go down? Does this? Is this good? Okay, that was a lot of work for that joke. I don't know what you're doing at your house. Put this, put this on. Maybe you'll watch it. Maybe watch it with a friend. Here we go. Class of 2020. Let's knock it out. Students, faculty, and parents, thank you so much for letting me speak at your graduation. It is an honor. As I look out upon you today, I see future lawyers and doctors, future actors and poets, and future Karens who will keep the great American dream of speaking to the manager alive. Never in all my years have I seen a group of people so royally f***ed over. I mean, it is unreal. I mean, you guys are kids. You're supposed to be having fun. You're supposed to just have fun stuff to do. And working for four years on a degree, I mean, that's a big deal. And the fact that that's been stripped away from you, well, it really, it hurts my heart. No prom, no graduation, no senior trip, no camp, no parties. Just you, home alone, watching your mom handle Amazon packages with spaghetti tongs. Just you, watching your dad learn the renegade. A sight no teenager needs to see. This is supposed to be a time when you guys are happy and moving forward to the next chapter in your life, and you've all had that stripped away from you. Stripped away like Michael Jordan guarding Stephen Hawking. A lot of you are wondering, who is Michael Jordan? Well, Michael Jordan is that guy who your dad's been watching the documentary on for the last six weeks and also using it as an excuse to avoid your mom. Most importantly, he's the guy from Space Jam. Speaking of Space Jam, I'd like to quote that movie right now and give you a little inspiration. The song from the movie is called I Believe I Can Fly. Now, in this case, I need you guys to believe that you can... No, don't quote R. Oh, yeah, maybe don't do, don't do R. Kelly. That's bad. We turn, take that out. Sorry. Oh, man. <sighs> I don't need you guys to fly. Well, at least the pandemic isn't the worst thing I mentioned in the speech. Tough, though. Tough when it's such a good song, you know, and, and then you, you forget what the person did. You know what I mean? It's kind of like, ooh. You gotta, you, know, you need a Wikipedia when you listen to music these days. You gotta check, you gotta, you gotta, you, you gotta source. That's a good thing to take with you. Source stuff, yeah, I'll turn it around. But I do wanna say things are getting better. Things are looking up. I mean, pretty soon you're gonna be able to... Uh, drive by your grandmother and wrap her in saran wrap and kiss her on the forehead, I don't... Uh, honestly, I feel bad for the little moments you guys are missing. You know, like after you go to graduation and then you go out for dinner and then you go out with your family to the one restaurant in town, and then your friend comes in with his family, and then you have to see like his weird mom and dad, and that gives you a window into why your friend's been so weird. You're like, oh wow, that's why you've been drinking for four years. Your parents are mutants. Or at the end of graduation, maybe there's a boy or a girl that you like, and so, you know, at graduation, it's the last time you're gonna see this person, and you go over there, and you get that closure, you know? That closure that, you were never good enough for this person and you never will be. Those are the moments that I'm sad that you guys aren't getting. Because you guys aren't having a real graduation, let me tell you what it's like. It's really not that great. You're not missing much. You go out there, you sit in the hot sun, okay? You bake out there in basically clothing that you that cannot breathe. There's no breathing in here. It is the worst design. It's, it's, it's literally like a linen cloth that you would put on a picnic table. Then, you sit there, they have to go through all the names, there's so many, and if your name isn't like A, B, or C, you have to wait so long, and by the time they get to your name, the dean is completely over it, right? And then you sit there and you're like, and I'm like waiting for like them to say Jason Nash, you know? Jason Nash. 
And then like, no, nobody claps, but the, the person before got claps, so then you're like, well, that's weird, nobody clapped for me, but okay, whatever. And then like, you go up on stage, and like, you, you go up there, and they don't even, that's it. They, they hand you a piece of paper. They don't even say anything nice about you. They don't even, they, like, I would love, they should just go like, Jason Nash, he was a good time. Just that, that would be enough. They don't even say that. They give you the diploma and they're like, hey, good luck. You're probably not gonna be able to find a job for five years, but uh, you know, have fun getting drunk tonight. Many of you who are graduating were over 18, which means you'll be able to vote in our presidential election this year, which is really nice, you know? It, uh, it gives you something to look forward to. And in these uncertain times, it's nice to have a little control over something. See, you get to decide between eating a massive pile of shit or a slightly smaller pile of shit. But you have to vote for somebody because the people who ate the massive pile of shit will be mad at you for not eating any shit and remind you constantly over the next four years that you are a piece of shit because you didn't eat a massive pile of shit. Anyway, I'm trying to think of the point of all this and it's it's tough for me to be profound or, or say something really great that will stick with you. But I'm not that smart, so it's kind of hard for me. But I did come up with this. You have to move forward because it's the only way you can move. I mean, literally, you can't go back in time. So you really just have no other choice. I mean, I guess you could just, you know, watch Outer Banks over and over again. But I, I wouldn't recommend it. I mean, it's good once, but I wouldn't give it a second watching. And from someone who was broke most of his life, who was fired from every job, and whose entire lower back is giving out on him, all I can say is just move forward because there's a good chance it will get better. Look, things are uncertain right now, and as I've proven, you don't need to figure it out until you're 45 years old. I mean, look at me. I have a mortgage and a mohawk, okay? There's no one like me in the world. I mean, honestly, not that I'm special or anything, but I gotta say, if I can do it, certainly you guys can do it too. I do have some good news for every person going to college in the fall. Now every university is an online university. Kinda wild to think about, huh? For those of you going to the University of Phoenix, it's basically the same thing as going to Harvard. So you have that to think about. I'll close by just referencing the Michael Jordan documentary, which I just watched, which was really cool. And there was a great moment where the author of a Jordan book, he said Michael Jordan's greatest asset was not that he could jump higher than anybody else or that he could run faster than anybody else. Michael Jordan's greatest asset was that he always lived in the moment. He never let things that happened to him in the past affect his present, and he never let thinking about things that were bad in the future affect him in any way. He always lived in the moment. So as you stand outside a Target in a line with a mask on and sweaty gloves, trying to go in there and get some white claws, remember to try to just live in the moment and know that things will get better very soon. All right, guys, here we go. Let's take our hats. Go grab a hat or a potato or anything. A potato works. If you have a potato, put a, put a sock on your head. Maybe you don't have a hat on. Let's throw our hat in the air and say congratulations to the class of 2020. Guys, cue the R. Kelly. No R. Kelly, no R. Kelly, sorry. It's tough. That was a mistake. Thank you, class of 2020. I love you and good luck. All right, we're gonna do some superlatives real quick. Here are some fans that uh, sent in pictures of their home graduation. I think it's pretty sick. This girl right here, this first girl, most likely to pose in front of anything and be excited about it, no matter what, every time. This girl right here, most likely to have a fridge that when you open it, it smells really strong. Not necessarily bad, but just really strong smelling. This guy wins, uh, most likely to take over his father's agricultural banking firm. Oh, look at this guy right here, beautiful little pup. Obviously, this guy took the phrase man's best friend a little too literally. This girl wins most likely to own a water park that goes bankrupt. This girl right here wins most likely to ask her mom to take 78 pictures from the same angle and not post a single one. This girl right here, she's got a trombone and some nice folios behind her. She wins most likely to low key become the most successful after years of being bullied for her trombone. Hopeful Brad right there. She wins most likely to rob my house while loving it. These five girls here, they win. Most likely to say, like, she's obsessed with me about their moms. All right, that's it. Love you guys. <laughs>